Hey there, welcome to Eastern West. Let's talk about an ethics lesson. This is a 2013 South Korean film which is normally classified as a crime thriller, but to be perfectly honest, it really doesn't fit into that genre very well. The film's story is, uh, well to be honest, it doesn't really have one. The film doesn't have a plot in the traditional sense, as it doesn't have a central narrative that runs throughout the majority of the movie. Instead, the film plays out a lot more like a case study. The premise of the film, as it were, is showing how the murder of a young girl ends up affecting the lives of four men. Namely, her next door neighbour, her ex-boyfriend, her manager, and the man that gets wrongly accused for the murder. Now this film is the directorial debut of a guy named Park Myon Rang, and is to date the only film he's actually directed, which is uh, a real shame because I absolutely love the directing in this film. A little bit of issues with the editing, but we'll get to that a bit later. This film is wonderfully shot, alright? This may be his first film, but he has great visions and great skills in just directing a scene. It is it's really quite wonderful. Like the lighting and the camera work and the angles he shots, it's absolutely astounding how well done they are. Now the real thing I love about this movie is the control of tone. Alright, this movie may open to bright colours and an upbeat soundtrack, but make no mistake, this is a film that is designed to make you uncomfortable. And I love the way he does it, by making a constant juxtaposition between the way that the movie looks and the fact that, um, basically every character in this film is a raging psychopath. Yeah. So yeah, remember that summary of the plot that I gave you a little bit before? Well, that wasn't actually wrong, but um, here's a much more accurate version. The premise of the film, as it were, is showing how the murder of a young girl ends up affecting the lives of four men. A guy who records her every move using hidden cameras in her apartment, the guy who killed her in a drunken rage, a mob boss type loan shark with severe anger issues, and a whimpering coward that was having an affair with her. Quite a diverse cast, ain't it? Now, the English title for this film is An Ethics Lesson. However, the original Korean title, Benoi Yuni Hak, the direct translation is actually The Ethics of Fury or The Ethics of Anger, which, for my money, is actually a much better title because every single character in this film is a horrible person. Absolutely no one is likeable, okay? Even the side characters are appalling. Okay, actually, that's not true. There is one likeable character in this film, this prostitute whose entire role in the plot is basically to show how horrible the other characters actually are. Now, the script for this movie was actually also written by the director, which makes it even more of a shame that he hasn't made a second movie yet. The way this movie plays out, even though there really isn't a story, it makes it feel like it is. Now, at the start, this film seems like it's a retelling of the film Rear Window. The neighbor's got the cameras in the apartment, he ends up recording the murder, but he can't go to the cops about it for obvious reasons. But then it transitions to a story that's almost about the feud between the neighbour and the murderer, and I start to think, okay, so maybe this is what the story was about. But then the rest of the characters end up joining in together, and it's obvious that that wasn't where it was going at all. In fact, it's actually quite astounding how each character they introduce is worse than the last. Yeah, the creepy neighbour guy and the killer, you almost end up rooting for them by the end of this film. Not because they redeem themselves, or they feel regret from what they did, well, one of them sort of does, but because by the end of the movie, there's been more bad stuff happening to them than they've done. I think it says something when a murderous alcoholic ends up having the moral high ground in a movie. All of this is helped by the dialogue, okay? And I really don't know if I should be scared at how well this guy manages to write sociopaths. It's just such great writing, okay? Not only does the dialogue help serve and explain how each of these characters think and act, but the dialogue in and of itself helps serve the tone of the movie, because some of the lines that are in here, they're just... well...
답답 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 내가 어? 그게 제일 중요한 거야 지금 진아야 내가 미안해 내가 잘못했어 진아야 쓸데없는 소리 하지 말고 묻는 말에 대답이 나해 그 여자랑 한날 나랑 한적 있어 없어 너는 우리 엄마 생일날 딴 여자랑 섹스하면서 돌아다니는데 나는 이 정도도 못 물어보니? It's that type of movie. Now let's talk about the editing. And as I mentioned before, I really wasn't as amazed with the editing as I was with the directing. There's a number of cuts and transitions, especially early on in this film, that I didn't think worked particularly well or were just kind of unclear or just really not that necessary. However, there is one particular stylistic choice in the editing of this movie, that, and I have to call it that because there's really no other way to put it, that I just need to ask, why did you do this? As in, no, seriously, I'm actually legitimately interested as to why you chose this idea as opposed to anything else. And that is how this film deals with the scene transitions, or at least the major ones. Now, usually in a movie, when you have characters that are doing separate things, you simply just cut between them to show either things happening at the same time or happening in some sort of a sequence. This film, however, does something a little bit different. If there's ever a point in this film where two of the main characters have to interact with each other, what it does is it shows the scene from one character's point of view. Then it cuts back to a random point in time to the other character, shows what they were doing from that point, and then replays the same scene from the other character's point of view. And, and, if that wasn't enough, they have a fully CG transition between these two moments, each of which looks relatively similar to this. I didn't add in that music, by the way. Now, for as bizarre as this is, it only really stays confusing for like the first two or three times, which is good, because it happens like ten times throughout this entire movie. And to be perfectly honest, I think the time jump editing style is actually a very interesting idea. I really like it. But the actual transitions themselves, it's so bizarre and so strange, and it just throws you off such a loop. I really am honestly curious as to what it was that inspired them to do that. Although, just being honest, there is one particular scene in this movie that I just don't get. Alright, and it's this scene where creepy camera guy is just waiting at a train station. I got nothing. I guess it might just be designed to be a red herring to build false tension, but the problem is there's nothing like this throughout literally any other point in this film. So it just... Ah, I don't get it. But the thing is, you know how like when you're watching an enjoyably bad movie and you're watching a scene and you're so fascinated by it that you want to keep watching it? That's basically what this entire movie is like. Except it was actually designed to be like that. This film doesn't go all out in how crazy it is, okay? But it's just strange enough that you start taking notice. So for example, there's a scene right near the end that ends up with a bunch of guys lying in pools of their own blood. Alright? There's quite a lot of it, and it was preceded by some actually really well done and quite heavy violence. And then the film decides to go all artistic on us. Except the way it does it, it almost feels like it's mocking itself for how artistic it's be. This is the type of feeling that the director does all the way through, and like I said right at the start, he's really damn good at it. This is not an enjoyable film, alright? This is a film that is designed to make you fascinated by how uncomfortable it is being. And it kind of works, so does that make it a good film? Mm, probably. So let me re-clarify, this is a film that is well written, well shot, and well acted. And it really is the type of film that you just cannot stop watching. I watched this film all the way through. I was never bored with it. I was confused at a few places, granted, but I never found it boring. Not because you actually want to know what happens next, but because each scene is just normal enough to feel strange. 
the way that characters talk and interact in this film, I can believe that this could happen, but it's such a messed up situation that I can't believe this could ever actually happen. This film almost plays out like a black comedy sketch, alright? It's taking something that's a very dark idea and portraying it as almost lighthearted, except it's not doing it for laughs. In fact, that's actually probably the best way I can describe this movie. This is a dark comedy that intentionally doesn't have any humour. Take from that what you will. All in all, if you like films that are straightforward and story focused, I would give this movie a pass. It probably won't work for you. However, if you like something that's a little bit out there, or you're someone that is in fact a fan of black humour, I'd say it's definitely worth taking a look at. You'll probably find it quite intriguing indeed. I give this film three butcher's knives and two life skills classes. So that was my review of an ethics lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time.